Let's see what happens. Oh no, too late. Rip Tower. So you can see this deck is very overpowered. He's mad, but you know what? Even with an front of Tower, this deck is very, very good. Hello everyone, it is Neon Black Game of the YouTube video, and today as you can see, I'm showing you a brand new deck for Arena Level 6. I'm very sorry for not Arena Level 6, because as you can see, you need the Golem, but you can still take away very helpful tips, because I'm going to explain some good tips, and you will eventually reach this level 2, so you can use your strategy later also. So let's get right into the video, and just before that starts, thank you so much for 600 subscribers. So here we go, I'm going to explain what every single card does in this deck, and then I will show you two replays after this, and I'm sorry if my voice sounds bad, it is very sore right now, because I recorded this video twice twice earlier, but the uh, recording got corrupted, so I'm very sorry about that, that I couldn't um, upload it yesterday, but that's why I'm uploading it today. So here we go. These two archers and spirit golems are used for support, defense, and attack. They're utility cards. Here, the wizard is also utility. It's used for taking out minion horde and skeleton army. Here, the tombstone's good for distracting hog riders, princes. You'll see both of those examples. Even good for distracting expos for a short amount of time if you're in a pinch. Also, it's good for distracting giant skeletons, virtually anything that goes for towers or defenses. Here we go. Here are the arrows. <clears throat> They're very good for going for the minion hordes. Um, pretty much any swarm troop, very low health. Here we go. Here's the Hog Rider and the Golem. They have the same role. They're the two attack troops, and it's a great combo together with the Wizard in behind. And here's the Tesla, very overpowered defense in my opinion. So here we go. Here's the first replay right here. As you can see, do I've gotten four wins and no three wins and one draw. So here we go. Let's watch the first one. Here we go. It is with a mirror. And as you can see, if you didn't see yet, he has an Inferno Tower in his deck. You might be thinking, Neoma Gaming, you are unbelievably weird. Why would a Golem? beat an inferno just watch just watch this deck is very very good so here we go i'm gonna start with the golem right away just to see what he does because this cause wreaks, wrecks a lot of havoc and wreaks a lot of havoc when you see someone with a golem <clears throat> It's just a really big intimidation factor. So he drops Spirit Goblins, which I won't even touch because they're, they're not even worth it. But now look, he drops the Hog Rider. Oh no, what should I do? Tesla right in the middle, distract the drop archers right behind, and there we go. His push is gone. Easy like that. Okay, so that's very easy. That's just how to defend against a Hog Rider with, for very little elixir. So now, oh no, he's in the front of the tower, and they're going to drop my Hog Rider. I gave him the well played, but look at this. This is why the combo is so good. Watch that Inferno Tower self. Even with a skeleton army. The Hog Rider is going to get to the tower and get two hits off the tower. That is amazing. He does have a Baby Dragon level 3. Who cares? It's going to get one hit off the tower. Wow. Two hits. Just that's it. And I do drop a Wizard on the bottom left, which I did not need to do, but that is okay. Oh, no. What am I going to do? I drop arrows right there. Bam. Two Elixir Prophet. So this deck pretty much counters any card in the game that I can think of. That's the advantage of using this deck. <clears throat> So there it goes. You can see the wizard does get two hits off, so we're winning by a lot. We've taken off around 800 damage while he's only taken off around 300, so this game is looking very, very good. So let's see. I'm probably not going to drop the golem next. It's a stalemate. We're just building up Lexer. He is ahead by a little bit, but not by a lot. So there we go. Drop the secret fear goblins to distract and then drop archers behind and the tombstone in the corner. Look at that. Even with mirrored hog rider, you have no chance because the tombstone protects it. Not a single hit off the tower and we're pushing again on the offense. So now as you can see, I'm up in Elixir. He was up by three. Now I'm up by two. So very good, very good defense right there. So I have the hog rider. I'm going to test out to see if he is an inferno tower. Will I drop the hog rider next? Will I or will I drop a Tesla? We'll see. It looks like yep tesla okay <clears throat> and he's probably going to do the same with his inferno tower because i have a little bit less elixir we'll see what happens <clears throat> Okay, he does. He drops his Inferno Tower. Um, there we go. I drop my Golem behind. When it becomes Double Elixir, this is when the strategy really shines because you can stack troops behind. And if you want me to make a video on how to stack troops, well, tell me that in the comments down below. And if you want um, me to make a video about pre-firing arrows, I can also do a video about that also. So he drops a Mirror Baby Dragon. Very interesting, which is going to put to waste my Archers and Spirit Goblins. But look how much damage that did. That's pretty surprising. And the Tesla, sh Tesla should take care of the rest. So there we go. He drops a Hog Rider. But look at that Tombstone. Bam. Ha ha ha. And he drops a skeleton army but it is too late look at that wizard go wrecking hit two inferno towers and the golem is still full health i dropped arrows right there which is kind of a waste but look at this i could have dropped them right now but look how much health will take out the tower will the wizard take out the tower no come on wizard oh the golem might sadly target the wrong tower but look at that 329 health this game looks like it's going to be over very soon he drops another hog rider but look at this tombstone bye bye so as you can see this strategy is very good for defending a mirrored hog rider are you serious mirrored hog rider bye bye look at that tesla bam he's done and look at that skeleton army versus wizard wizard wins every time drop archers in behind will he drop the baby dragon to save his tower he will oh this is so close i drop arrows but sadly that does nothing very bad pre-fire right there <clears throat> that is not what you want to do 
Okay, here come Hog Rider, go. He's probably gonna chop the Inferno, but let's see what happens. Oh no, too late! Rip Tower. So you can see, this deck is very overpowered. He's mad, but you know what? Even with an Inferno Tower, this deck is very, very good. So let's go to the next attack replay. So the first one, we won. Second one is a tie. You don't need to see that. That's just the same Inferno Tower. And the third one here is an Expo deck. An Expo deck, yes. The infamous Expo deck. That is fine. He's a prince. Who cares? This deck will beat it also. So he's a level 6, yes, which does affect a little bit. It only gives him like 100 more health. I mean, me, 100 more health, that's nothing. That's like a shot from Baby Dragon. So let's see, drop the uh, <clears throat> Golem first. And then he drops a Tesla in the middle. I'm sorry, my voice is going. This is not good. So he puts the wow sign because, as you can see, the intimidation factor is huge with the Golem. It's one of the most intimidating cards in the game, so, aside from the giant skeleton, pretty much. So he drops the Expo, and then I'm going to drop my Hog Rider. Look at that beautiful. That's the advantage of having the Hog Rider and the um, Golem. But he does drop his own Spear Golem, so that is fine. My Spear Golems go to work, pretty much taking out his Expo. Will the Expo get a single shot? Off my tower, we'll see I drop arrows on the minion horde again. Minion horde's a very popular card, and for some reason it retargets. The expo retargets, but look at that, he got like three hits off. That is nothing. That's like a hundred damage or something. So there we go. That is that's virtually nothing. And as you can see, the gall mites do do some damage and do a little bit of damage to the barbarians once they explode. So I'm gonna drop some archers in behind or a wizard, either one. Wizard, another counter. Bam, will you drop a fireball? Yes, see. No, no, fireball. No, 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 no. Oh, that's fine. You can fireball that. That virtually was as if he did nothing because that fireball was meant to take out my um, wizard, which would then mean he would have a push. But since he did not take out my wizard, that's virtually a useless fireball. So very good. Okay, the wizard doesn't get off any hits, but that is fine. I withstood his push. So now I know he uses fireball. I pretty much know every single card in his deck besides the prince because he's not put the prince down yet. So he's going to put down the Tesla that looks like next to right in the middle of the screen, like always. Bam, come on. There we go in the middle. And I'm probably going to drop my Golem too. Or actually just the Tombstone because I'm afraid that he has one more troop that I don't know about, which I'm correct. He does have the prince, but also defends against the expo pretty well. Because as a Tombstone, it will target the Tombstone, destroy it, then skeletons pop out. So he drops the expo on the right side. Ooh, cheeky. But look at this. I have the nice Hog Rider going to work. But he is a wow. Mini Horde, a Tesla, and a... Jeez, Spear Goblins and Expo, bam, amazing arrows. Well, I mean, those are pretty good arrows. I could have done a little bit better, but I also took out the Expo, Spear Goblins, and most of his minion hordes. So there you go. Now he only has a Tesla left to defend, which means I'm going to go on the push. Okay. <clears throat> 60 seconds left of time for this attack strategy to shine. Let's see, what is he going to drop next? Do we need any no. Oh my gosh, barbarians and a prince. Oh no, that looks bad, doesn't it? Okay, that's fine. I dropped the tombstone right here. Come on. Oh no, that was a bad tombstone. That was horrible. The prince is on the tower. This is very bad. The archers do do some distraction quickly. Good archers, good. And now the prince, sorry for that lag spike. The prince is attacking the golem, which is fine. He fireballs, but that is a horrible fireball. And look at this. This looks like good game right here. He drops a Tesla. That is too late. And at the minion horde. Wow, that is the pre-fire arrows I'm talking about right there. Bam, I can make a video about that, and he gave me the thumbs up for those nice arrows. So look at this, now I'm, oh no, he's winning still, that's bad. And he drops, that's a pretty good counter of the wizard right there. If you want to know, you can drop barbarians around the wizard. So this is looking pretty bad, but again, I have the spear goblins. He's probably going to fireball right there, which is going to be a complete waste. That was a complete waste. And no, no, tombstone, you better go, oh, clutch tombstone right there. That, that tower could have gone down right there. Arrows, which is bad, that means I have the opportunity to go put my hog right around. He puts a Tesla, why? Arrow, 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 ooh, pre-fire arrows again, and that is good game. Good game, my friend. It beats the level 6, but he's an Expo deck. That's how you beat the Expo deck, my friend. So, and that pretty much concludes this video. So, that is about it. So, just thank you again for over 600 subscribers. This is insane. And there we go. Here's the deck right here. So, that is about it. So, I really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did learn anything at all in this video, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next video.